Hello everyone, welcome back again to the step-by-step -step tutorial in which we are going to talk about sensitivity analysis. Alright, so for this part, we are going to focus there are two kinds of different sensitivity analysis. So the first of all, okay, let me just present this to you. Okay, so the first of all, as what you have seen in the sensitivity analysis we have discussed uh, last lesson, is that first of all is the variable cells. So, regarding the variable sensitivity analysis, so the first thing you can see is the quantity design 1, quantity design 2, what is the final value? So, what is the final value is basically the optimum mixes. So, to reach the optimum, uh, to optimum level of the objective function, I need to produce 20 quantity design 1, I need to produce uh, 100 quantity design 2. Okay, so you go to your boss and you tell them, and the next thing that your boss will ask you is that, okay, so uh, if I want to increase the, uh, for example, the, 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 if I want to sort of like create a different mix, I don't want to create 20 and 100, well, I want to create maybe like something else, then what should I do? Well, if you see here, you can see that there is a coefficient. So if you remember this coefficient, it's basically the price of the quantity design 1 and quantity design 2. So if you want to produce more quantity design 1, then you need to increase your uh, the price of the quantity design 1 so that it's more beneficial for you to produce quantity design 1 rather than quantity design 2. Okay? And you need to increase until 5. So that quantity design 1 will be more beneficial than quantity design 2. And by the end of the day, you will have the final value that will highlight probably more quantity design 1. Okay? And also, if you want to change the... You will you see here there's a level decrease. So, if let's say of these 5. So if you want to change the quantity design 2 production, then you might want to reduce the price by uh by five dollars meaning that you gain less revenue from the quantity design two so it becomes less valuable than quantity design one so of course because of that if you reduce for example quantity design two by six dollars then quantity design one is more favorable and you will produce more on quantity design one so let us try of doing that okay so all right so I can go to my Excel, we have this, and let's say that we reduce the quantity design to price by 10. So I put a new price at 15. So logically, this will change the optimum outcome because I will not produce 2100 less, but I will produce more because of, uh, because that now quantity design 1 is more uh, valuable for me than design 2. So of course, I will produce more of the design 1. So if I change this to 15, so let's see, and then we do the solver again, and we solve it, remember, 20 and 100. So if I solve this again, it changed. So you see here, now it's 60 and 60. Wow. But of course, I produce less of the uh, total profit is less. Okay, so that just means that, well, now the weightage is different. Quantity design 1, 2 is no longer that much of an influencer for me, so I produce more quantity design 1. Okay? But what happened? Okay, let's go uh, make it back to 25, rerun the solver. Then we have the initial. Oops. Okay. Somehow you got jump, champ. Okay, so 120. But what if I reduce less than my uh, allowable decrease? So I will reduce this by maybe only 4. So would that change my decision variables? Well, we'll see. So let's say 25 divided by 4 is 21. And after that, I redo the solver. Okay, sometimes got error. Then I solve it again. Then I return back. It doesn't change. It doesn't change and the total profit, okay, of course it changes because, well, now the price is less, but the, the product mixes doesn't change. So what it says to me that basically allowable decrease 
is to allow like uh, the same product mixes that uh, reduce the co uh, coefficient which is the price by a certain degree so that it doesn't change the total production value which is the final value here okay so that is the definitions of the final value of the value coefficient allowable increase allowable decrease and reduced cost is basically this is not a good example here but maybe we can discuss it on the blending problem but reduced cost meaning that if you increase one of these meaning that you need to let go a certain uh objective variable value so if the reduced cost if uh is 50 then if i start producing quantity design 2 then i need to let go of a certain uh objective value right so yeah we'll discuss about this again in the next uh tutorial so it might be better and more uh convincing rather right, than if you discuss it here because i don't see anything all right so and then afterwards you have the constraints so the constraints is that if you see here, you have final value, shadow price, constant H R H side, allowable increase or decrease. So final value is that how many of these resources that I use. Okay. And shadow price is basically right, if I increase one of these uh of the values, then uh I can increase the price, which is the optimum number by 1.67 and if i increase this by one then i can increase by 20 all right so and then this allowable increase so uh which is sort of like how many constraints as you increase until by the end of the day uh well, this handle price is no longer applied okay meaning that well now we have the constraints and this become and the other constraints like total red total or total yellow total will become binding so those uh, the constraints will become important because if I add on resources to the constraints, which is a 300, for example, if I add on to 1000 total blue total, well, definitely I couldn't use all these resources because other constraints, like total red total, is also like going to be a bottleneck for me, correct? So the more I increase the resources, well, pretty much the more, the more, the, the less valuable a resource is okay so it kind of makes sense in that intuition way but let us try an experiment so for example if i increase uh 300 by one then what does what would it give to our total profit okay so for example it's a blue color isn't it uh, uh yeah blue color so blue color is 301 okay i just increase one and then i create solver again and then solve it and then check the total profit so the total oops okay i should click ok so the profit profit now becomes 500.33 okay which is an increase compared to the previous one so it it gives an increase of the setup price so three 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 oh sorry um Sorry, increase because like as you can see it added on the design one productions by one point six 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 seven two 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 what is happening here? Huh, doesn't give what I really want. Yeah, let me pause for a while. Okay, sorry for that. Apparently it's just my extra problem of handling a little bit of decimal points. So um yeah, let's just redo it. So let's say that uh instead of taking the one point six six seven here, let's say I want to increase the saddle price by twenty. So what I do is that I increase the final value by one. Okay? So if I go through here, paper constraints is one to twenty, I I increase by one. Okay. And let's take a look at what happens to the total profits. So it says here the total profits should increase by twenty, okay? So let's just solve it again. I solve it, and there you go. If you see here, total profits becomes two five two zero, and then I use all the papers and I use all the total blue constraints and every constraints that I have. So it's very cool. It's a very cool way to just say, "Hey boss, if I increase more paper, then you will get sixty. Okay, you will get twenty dollars more on your on your revenue." 
or probably you can see it here like for example okay let me cancel it so 120 here okay so what happens if, it, if I increase to a certain number of degree to the sky boundary 25 then what will happen well we'll see if I 25 150 uh, let's say I, I increase 50, uh, 30 so it's 150 then if I try and solve it what will happen so solve it again okay so interestingly now that I don't use all my paper so other things well now that stumped me is the yellow ink okay to find my total profit so no matter what how many paper that I have if you see here the total becomes 133.33 why is it so where does 1.33.33 come from well it comes from the allowable increase so what does it mean is that well it's important to increase the paper to increase the final value of the price but by the end of the day uh, well you can only increase up to 13 until that is no longer useful for you to increase your paper so this is very important to see how important each resource is in other words and uh, sensitivity analysis it allows you to get a more insights about how useful is your uh, your coefficient your price of the design one design two and also it talks a lot of things about how important is your resource that how many can you increase so that you improve your objective variable which is your revenue and by the end of the time how many that i can improve and it's still efficient so those are the kinds of insights and questions that you can give and tell your boss by looking into this sensitivity analysis with that i hope i give you a, a clear explanations so um yeah i'm still trying to learn myself but if if you want then there are a lot of resources that you can find online that definitely talks about sensitivity analysis okay with that i would like to give an end to this um problem and the next lesson we are going to talk about a more complex model which is the blending problem Okay, thank you and goodbye.